Well, President Donald Trump rallied against a migrant caravan winding its way through Mexico this week. Hundreds of Central American immigrant families had already arrived at the border and been released into the U.S. by authorities. The influx, unrelated to the caravan, has crowded immigration holding areas and detention centers across the Southwest. Border Patrol has released so many families, advocacy groups in Arizona and Texas has had to house them in churches and motels. In El Paso, the nonprofit Annunciation House Shelter expected to take in 1,200 migrants this week and another 1,500 next week. We're in effect receiving a caravan a month, said Ruben Garcia, the shelter's director, after serving pizza to immigrant families staying in 70 hotel rooms his group rented this week at a nightly cost of $3,500. So people are worried about a 4,500, 7,500 caravan coming from Mexico, but we're already getting 1,200, 1,500 people a week, and people think that we don't have an immigration problem? As he spoke, a Border Patrol agent called and asked Garcia whether he could shelter another 80 immigrants on Thursday. Garcia agreed. He had just heard from a church willing to take up to 90 people, the latest of 16 religious groups in El Paso and nearby Las Cruces, New Mexico, to volunteer. He appealed to another church late Tuesday to help. His group runs on volunteers and donations. As the flow increases, I could say to Border Patrol, I can't accept anymore. But I won't, because I know what those holding cells are like. I want to expand our capacity, Garcia said late Tuesday as he waited for two Border Patrol buses to arrive with the 80 immigrants. I mean, this just goes to show you how strained our facilities are. Border Patrol caught a record 16,658 immigrant family members crossing the border illegally in September. More than 160,000 immigrant family members were caught or turned themselves in during the fiscal year that ended last month, 42% more than any previous year, the spokesman said. Total annual apprehensions this year, family members, single adults, unaccompanied minors, were still below figures from 2014, the last major surge in families and unaccompanied children on the border, and far below numbers from past decades. Still, federal immigration detention facilities are now 98% full, forcing officials to release immigrants more rapidly in larger groups, with the burden of sheltering them falling on immigrant advocates. So here we are, our facilities are hovering near 100% capacity, so we have to release more immigrants into the state. It's absolutely incredible. Catholic Community Services of Southern Arizona was called on to shelter 250 immigrants last week using motel rooms for overflow, 350 the week before in Tucson, and another 250 in Yuma. Remember, these guys are being bussed in. It's difficult to maintain this level of intensity, said Teresa Cavendish, the nonprofit's director of operations, who said they were warned to expect another 80 immigrants Wednesday. Immigration and custom enforcement officials who dropped immigrants off at the motel where the group rented rooms visited the nonprofit's leaders Wednesday and warned that the first wave of the migrant caravan of 7,000 traveling norward could reach the border next week. Shelters are already full, and volunteers are exhausted, Cavendish said. Folks from ICE are doing their best in terms of estimating the numbers of people they will be able to accommodate in their facilities, said Margaret Peg Harmon, CEO of the Catholic Relief Group. They don't know either how many people they'll get on a given day. At the two El Paso motels, which Garcia asked not to be identified for safety reasons, volunteers greeted arriving immigrant families with a brief orientation, then steered them towards showers and meals in a food tent set up in the parking lot. Afterward, working out of several rooms converted into makeshift offices, volunteers distributed room keys and helped families contact relatives to stay with as their immigration court cases proceed. Relatives usually pay bus fare so the new arrivals can join them. Now, I'm not going to go on here. You can read the rest of the article for yourself. But the rest of the article goes on to give stories from the immigrants, which honestly sounded virtually the same. In a lot of instances, when these migrants speak, at least the ones that are presented on the cable news television, they sound scripted. Now, I know a lot of people are concerned about this caravan coming through Mexico. But just like this article said, we receive a caravan a month. At least 1,500, 12 to 1,500 people a week get shipped to migrant advocacy groups and temporary lodging at hotels or churches. Our retention centers are floating near 100% capacity. 88% of asylum seekers get asylum. All they have to do is recite coached lines. Now that's on top of all the people who make it here illegally, not to mention those who get visas, legal admission, or naturalized. A lot of you out there act like the United States doesn't take in any immigrants. You guys are wrong. I mean, America can't even approach California's homeless crisis. Where's the infrastructure for this approaching invasion? We should have the mind of Christ, yes, but we are supposed to be as wise as serpents. Something isn't right about this 
caravan, they keep calling it. Again, the migrants they interview, Trump is a fear monger, Trump is spreading division, but they're still coming here so that he can be their president. El Paso, Yuma, Tucson, New Mexico, Los Angeles, California, all these places have been absorbing these hordes. And in California, many undocumented individuals can get a license, and with that, they can vote. So which way do you think they'll lean? In many ways, this could be seen as beneficial when utilized for political leverage. And many do wonder if this is indeed part of an initiative. But I think I'm going to leave it there. Leave your comments below. I know this is a touchy subject for many. Take care out there.